Hi, this is Nick Houston here for Gotham Sound and Communications, live at NAB 2023, day two. Um, we're here with Konos, Sean, and Rohan. How are you guys? Going good. It's day two, and uh, yeah, it's been a, been a great show so far. Good. Yeah, so awesome. Two things I should mention about this. Number one, we're live, so if you have questions for Sean or Rohan about the Konos mic, uh, please put them in the chat, and Lauren Banjo will read them live on air. Um, other thing we should mention is that all of the sound for this is being done on the Konos mic, so we're going to do a little uh, live demonstration. So, first and foremost, thanks for being here. Second and foremost, uh, tell us about the Konos mic. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, hey, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Um, so the Konos is a really unique type of microphone. Um, essentially, it's actually 80 microphones in the form factor of a typical shotgun. A couple of key differences. You, you might have noticed that uh, it's rectangular. Um, so there's, there's, a, there's a key difference for you. But what we're really doing is taking a ray technology and putting it into those form factors that most sound engineers are, are used to working with. Um, so what, it, what is it and what, why 80 microphones? How does it all work? So, what, what we can do with those 80 microphones is shape the pattern of the microphone to match the environment. Um, essentially, you know, the mic is here, and this connects via Ethernet down to this control box, this processor. And with that, we can change the pattern using a simple dial. So we have three preset patterns here. Uh, you'll get an idea of kind of what those patterns look like based on these Pac-Man shapes here. Um, but essentially, we've got three patterns that are hypercardioid, or hypercardioid-like pattern, very narrow and medium pattern. Um, so this is like a, a typical cardioid pattern, and this is actually the setting we're using at the moment on, on the mic, just so that we can capture all three of us speaking. Um, and then we've got a, it's, it's wider than a wide cardioid, it's a full 180 pattern that we have there. So we're going from capturing an individual speaking right up to capturing a whole crowd of people all in the one microphone. That's one of its features, its ability to change that, that pattern to match the environment and you know, really give you a lot of versatility and a lot of options in the one microphone. The other aspect of this is that... Wait, so since we have this all set up, can we do a, like an yeah, on-air we, switch? we absolutely can. To do that. So let's show that off now. I'll, I'll, I'm con I'll control the, the tools here, but I'm controlling on a box here. So we'll flick over here from what is a medium pattern, so trying to capture the three of us, mm -hmm. to something a bit more narrow. Um, so right now, you, you've kind of honed this in. Um, this is a, a 60 degree pattern. Um, and what you'll hear here is just kind of that sharpening. You, you'll get, just get a lot more of me and a lot less of this very noisy convention center. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully that's coming through clearly. If I want to switch to the kind of plead off the opposite of that, if I want to go to right to a 180, I'll flick the dial here. And now if I stand out here, Hey, you're probably going to get all. You know, you're, you're, all getting half, you're getting you're getting half of NAB here. Yeah, mm -hmm. you'll you'll hear a, hear a lot of everything. Mm -hmm. um, we'll go back to that medium pattern that we're on. So that's control that I guess you know we're just not used to having with with a microphone. Um, but there's a little bit more to it than that. So if um you know whatever we've selected that dial to that directionality, that's what's coming through channel one of the system. Um, so channel one is the target audio, but but at the same time we're also capturing every Everything else essentially with this microphone array you're always capturing 360 audio so whatever's not in that target I always like to think of it as like a, a pizza the slice of the pizza that, that you're targeting um, that you want to target is coming through channel one the rest of the pizza is coming through channel two so that is the um, you know the, the noise floor it's the ambient it's the room um, in live production that could be um, so let's take sports for an example that could be crowd noise that's coming through that second channel uh, where that football player is coming through channel one and its own distinct channel um, it could be be an interview where you've got a um, the interviewee in channel one that target, but then the interviewer is going to be coming through uh, channel two and that and that and that rear. So you're getting kind of a front and a rear mic, or it's kind of target and then everything else, which I guess again we've never really had that control with mic. So you can mix in the ambience as needed. You can mix in the ambient mm -hmm. because you've got the noise floor. You can post process and mm -hmm. take it out. Um, again, it's mm -hmm. just about providing control. Um, and then the last aspect I'll speak to here um, is uh, just a, a, this third output we have. So this, so it's just this one here. So this is target audio. 
this is ambient or kind of the everything else audio and this one is Conos Select. So this is noise filtered audio. Essentially the way that this works is you're always going to get a little bit of bleed of the ambient, the kind of the everything else into that target audio. What this does is it extracts any of the ambient that's bleeding in. So um, it's a little bit of a noise cancelled channel. Um, we can probably show you that now. So just to contrast it, if we go right. to that other channel. Three, two, one, noise cancelling. Okay. There is a slight delay in this, right? There is, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's two frames, 42 milliseconds, mm -hmm. um, but it's fixed. It doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't change. Um, so it's very kind of you know, straightforward to deal with. Um, but what you will have, will have heard there is a lot more of NAB, this very loud environment, is um, it's just been extracted, it's being taken out. So again, it's just about having those options. What, the way that we're seeing this use, this, this more noise cancelled channel use, is um, for dailies, so you're getting kind of a live feed in that, in that, um, that high noise environment. For live, um, uh, when you're operating in you know, that environment that a typical microphone just wouldn't operate. So you know, that could be dealing with urban traffic noise, wind noise on a beach, um, yeah, wherever this is operating that you know, your typical mic just wouldn't cut it. Mm -hmm. These are all simultaneous feeds, so again, it's about having the options. It's all coming into the recorder and you choose um, what you want to work with later on. Great. Uh, let's go back to our normal sound, so we're in sync for since we're live. Um, yeah. but one thing I want to highlight that I was really excited about because I hadn't seen it was mm. an actual you know, a mount and a mm -hmm. boom pole uh, that works with Ethernet because this is on an Ethernet table. Correct. That's right. Um, so I guess with you know, in creating a essentially a rectangular microphone, um, the first question we were always getting asked is, well, how do I get this to work mm -hmm. with my windshield? How do I get this mounted on a boom? And which is a, a very legitimate question. It's got to work with um, existing people's gear and and tie into the ecosystem. So we've been building um, accessory kits, liars, um, adapters, so that it works in your know, Rycote systems and their windshields. Um, we've even started adapting to Sinel systems which we'll show and show shortly um, but it's just it's about dealing with Ethernet which is I guess a fairly new concept to deal with in sound there's not many microphones that are going to take an Ethernet out. Um, Did you build this whole piece? Uh, so the, the parts that we build are the um, the, the, the liars or uh -huh. the, 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 the microphone holders and then Ethernet adapters so that we can get Ethernet out of the shield so very easy to put on I mean you know the liars go on like any other liar would, and the, you know, these clips are something that exists already. So it's what people are used to. It just it, it's Ethernet instead of XLR. Yeah, cool. And then I mean, this is very this is very slick. I think very is used. Yeah. The, the other really cool thing about using Ethernet is. Um, you, you, you can really use any kind of cable there. So if I, at Cat5, Cat6, or Cat, Cat5e and Cat6, um, it just, again, it's like any, you know, many, most people have these Ethernet cables lying around, um, you know, and then it's PoE, so we test typically kind of 50 meters to 70 meters, but um, you know, you're gonna get up to 100 meters um, with, this, with mm -hmm. this system in terms of how far the mic can be. And how is the box powered? Uh, so the box is powered by USB-C. Uh -huh. Um, so that again provides you a number of options. Obviously, you know, a number of bags provide USB USB C power um, as well as carts. But you know, we're at the show. We're operating something like this a little USB C power bank. This is going to give you three and a half to four hours on something quite small. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you always, you can always operate off off mains. Mm -hmm. right. Now, I had heard one of the use cases for this was actually mounted on a drone. That's actually where we started out. Um, so your daughter all the creators of Conos, um, started out very much as a drone company. And that's <laughs> with, uh, you know, the way that we started there was in things like search and rescue, um, with uh, long distance hostage negotiations. We're really looking for ways in which we could provide ears to these essentially flying lawnmowers, these, mm. these hulking noisy things in the sky. Um, and in doing so, kind of you know, using some fairly like life-saving um, applications. But mm -hmm. you know, as we went on, uh, started taking the microphone technology off of the drone. We were doing a bit of work in film and television, giving it to some sound engineers that we, you know, we knew and respected. And the feedback we got on that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. So um, it was enough for us to say, hey, the features are very unique, but just the way the mic sounds as well is just kind of you know, really at that very high end. Um, 
you know, and that's you know, that's I guess just one of the big um, uh, challenges we had to overcome initially as well because this is a digital microphone although being output into the analog world um, it, it sounds very much like a very rich analog microphone mm. um, and so yeah, we're kind of overcoming these objections of digital sounds harsh sounds clinical and it sounds you know, really really natural and, um, and rich mm. cool and uh, this is available now it is available now. We're um, we're a couple of months into into shipping and selling this, so uh -huh. um, it is it is available um, through a few select uh, resellers across uh, mm -hmm. the United States, um, and so yeah, it's uh, it's it's ready to kind of want as many people's hands on it as possible right now, getting it yep. out there into the real world. Mm -hmm. And what's the price point on it? Uh, so we're selling this at the moment for um, just under five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, so four nine nine five. Got it. And that's for the the mic. This everything you need to, mm -hmm. to operate. Yep. So so the mic, the process box, cables, and, and kind of ways to power it. Got it. Cool. Yep. Um, and then in terms of like, there's 80 mics in there, so it seems like there's uh, there's some scalability that could even go beyond this box. Correct. Hey, you know the answer there is this is very much just the beginning. Uh -huh. um, yeah, we've got a lot planned and a lot in the work. We're really again taking kind of array technology into mm -hmm. professional pr production environments um, and making it work for the user. So yeah, to completely scalable technology. You'll you'll kind of see some some fairly different form factors and in your instances of this coming up. Cool. Um, so anything else you guys want to add before we open it up to the questions from the Did internet? You see the Oh, uh, you yeah, want to point over to the Sonella? Sure. So, awesome um, shields these guys make, and um, hey, we're kind of not available yet as a, as a solution for the Colos, but um, you know, very soon we'll kind of have also have mounting um, uh, ways to mount it within Sonella. Awesome. Great. All right. So, anything else you want to add until we uh, no, before we open it up? That's good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lauren Banjo, do you mind uh, telling us if there are any questions from the internet? Yes, Alexander would like to know if you could use channel two to mask the delay you experience on channel one when swapping pickup patterns, or is it baked into both channels? Um, well, yeah, so, so the answer there is um, the, the processing for, for that channel three is happening on the box, so, um, so, so it's actually taking channel one and channel two and doing some math on it. So, so it, you, you can't really use channel two to, to solve that, unfortunately. But however, in, in, in an environment, so the way that's designed is that in post, if, if, you, if you didn't find usable audio on channel one, you could use channel three as, as a replacement for it. Um, so just bumping it by, by two frames will, will get you usable audio in those situations. So it's designed as the ultimate backup. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what it's designed for. Um, in certain live instances, perhaps, you may be able to introduce a little bit of delay in, in, in your video. There's, there's a, in your video chain, there's also going to be delay, so you can accommodate for it. So it, it, each use case um, you know, can, can give you different solutions for it. So. What else, Lauren? David wants to know how heavy the box is and how it would work in a bag situation. Okay. Yeah. So um, the so I'll, I'll explain the uh, the, um, the weight of both because I think it's both relevant. Um, so the, the the microphone itself is um, 100 grams. Uh, Rohan might want to do the. It's the about five version. five ounces or so. Yeah. There you go. So and less than um, half a pound. Yeah. The, yeah. the box itself uh, weighs. Um, so it's about 700 grams, so about a pound. Right. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so it's not, it's not that heavy. It is a little big, but it's not heavy. Yeah, no. so, so we've had this used um, in a number of KTEC bags. In fact, um, so with sound devices, recorders, um, many of them, they've got ample spacing to also put this. Um, we've used it in wireless implications where, uh, instances where it's been on a belt clip and we've had wireless XL or XLR transmitters within that and then that's gone to a, to a cart or elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so we've found that, yeah, there's a number of commercially available bags where um, it sits really nicely with, a, um, with, with field recorders. Right. I think the other option there to mention is that because it's Ethernet, you could actually position the box in a different place to where you put the mic. So, so I think because this is not a traditional microphone system, you, you can play with and be creative with where you put the box and where you put the mic. So you don't necessarily need to cart it around with you all the time. Um, you do have up to 100 meters of, of slack on, on that cable. Yeah. 
So a great instance there is you know a few productions we've been involved with lately have um, had uh, you know the the the, um, the box sitting back on a cart um, and live it's been in a, in, a, in a tent and kind of sitting on the audio desk and the controls have been there with with right. uh, the, with the mixer. Mm. Right. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, what what other questions do we have? Is this standard forty eight volt phantom power? So that it, was the it's answer, it's, right? um, it's it's not forty eight volts. So so there's there's PoE and PoE plus, and so so we're on the on that end of, of the spectrum. But yes, so so on um, it 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 is designed. The mic will plug into uh, PoE switches. Um, but we're like 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 Sean mentioned earlier. This this is this is the product that we're bringing to market right now. Um, and then what what we're building with that is the ability to then route a whole bunch of those um, through PoE switches as well. So it will handshake with PoE switches. It'll work in that environment. And we're excited to, to bring that to you. Yeah. And to clarify, so this box is, is powered externally via USB. That's correct. And correct. then this yep. box provides the PoE, PoE that's Plus correct. for yep. the yep. mic. And that's, that's, that's the powering solution for you, it. That's you've correct. got it. Yep. So if yep. you have a BDS with a USB connector on it, you can put this in your bag, or if you have a cart with USB on it, or you have a you know 12 volt to USB, basically exactly. USB to this box, and it'll take care of the rest. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So that, just just to clarify that even further, that's USB uh, power delivery 2.0. Uh-huh. So it's 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 the 12 volt um, rather than the 5 volt. So. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Special USB. Yeah. Perfect. USB plus plus. Just wanted to be new with everything we did. So. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, all right. What else, Lauren? That looks like all questions we have for now. Awesome. That's fantastic. Well, anything Excellent. else you guys want to add? No, that's cool. I mean, I think um, for us, it's really exciting to bring the product to market. Um, you know, it's been challenging for everyone over the last two years. But with, with COVID, um, I love the fact that everyone's getting back. Um, live events are coming through. Um, we'd love to, to get the, these mics into people's hands um, and get them to try it in the field um, and come back to us with what works, what doesn't work. Um, any questions, we're here for you. Um, just reach out to us or, or the, or the friend, friendly guys at, at, at Gotham, um, and I'm sure all your questions will be answered. So, um, yeah, we, we, we want your feedback. Great. And, hey, if you're at the show, come to the booth. We are C5249, and uh, we'd love to get your ears on it. Great. Awesome. Well, I'll take this one with me. I appreciate it. Um, All right. So thanks, guys, for being with us. Awesome. Um, We'll be back with another video shortly. Uh, Remember to leave your questions in the comments. See you soon. Cool.